Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Ted Carr here and today on the Friends and Positivity podcast, I'm going to be interviewing my good friend Patrick Pfeiffer. Now, Patrick is a young man. He's only 23 years old, but he's incredibly wise as you'll soon find out. And Patrick just performed an at-home silent 10-day Vipassana retreat, which means he sat and meditated every day for about 10 hours. And I'd just like you to imagine for yourself right now, put yourself in his shoes and just ask yourself, how would my life be different if I quit the internet for 10 days, if I didn't talk for 10 days, if I didn't go out and do anything for 10 days, I just stayed at home. This episode is going to shed some light on what might happen to you if you do the same thing or at least what happened to Patrick so it's a really really cool episode Patrick is uh, like I say he's a good friend of mine I actually met him uh, this summer and he's one of those guys who you meet and instantly you just feel like yeah this, this is a homie this is a brother this is someone uh, who's, who's part of the family so do hope you enjoy and uh, I'll get back to you at the end of the podcast so much love and please enjoy this debut episode of the Friends and Positivity Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Ted Carr. Hey man, what up? What's up, dude? How you been? Yo, you're alive. <laughs> I am alive, yo. <laughs> you survived 10 days in solitude. That's so true, man. So true. Wow. Hey, was it, was it, uh, like, how the hell did it go? <laughs> Dude, it was, uh, it was honestly one of the best things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> it was just amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, you're going to get asked this a lot, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be the first to ask it. I think you may have already been asked it a few times, but was it hard? <laughs> Um, it was, but not for the reasons you might think. So it was, it, if you had like, so for me, one of the hard things was like, I didn't realize and I actually really started to appreciate was having good posture. Pain becomes a thing when you sit down for eight to 10 hours every single day and you don't. So you're not sitting on a chair, right? So it's just your, you have to have like a, you know, what they say, like an erect spine, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if your posture is shit and you have poor, po- like in your, sh- you know, your shit posture is there for eight or 10 hours for the whole day, no background, then you're going to get a lot of pain and it's going to be, yeah, it's just not going to make it fun. So the meditation for me was pretty simple. It was easy. Um, I mean, it wasn't the easiest thing. I mean, it, did in a certain sense feel like work every day, but after a while, like around like half halfway, like five days, six day, fifth day, six day, it just became like fun to do, minus the pain. But then I fixed the posture. I learned how to have a good posture, like to really pay attention to that. And then, because uh, it's not really something that it's taught, you know. So it's like, what is the right posture? Like what what like what is the good posture for your back? Um, when you're sitting down, like, what does it look like? Especially when you're meditating, at least something that's not something I really appreciated, like how important that is, or even like looked into it, but I did and I corrected it and yeah, it was amazing. It was, uh, some crazy, crazy shit, um, that I realized through it. But yeah, dude, it was, it was great. It was super, it was profound and like some permanent things, some permanent shifts happened for sure. Um, and I can't really look at life the same way, like many enlightenments. So it's just like crazy stuff. But yeah, dude, it was, it was, it was <laughs> I got to tell you, man, not talking for 10 days, uh, you can really, like we take talking for granted, but when you don't talk for 10 days and then all of a sudden you start talking, you really can feel the power that we take so much for granted, which is just talking, just communicating. It's just such a weird thing when you don't do it for such a long time and then you start doing it. It feels weird. It's so much power in there, so much power in communication. They're just talking verbally. So much power, but we don't notice it. You know? So 
So but, did, uh, you, did you use the internet during that time? Um, yes, I did because, like, I used it in this way. I used it for, because, uh, like, during the uh, true, like, during at the retreat centers, they let you, they, like, either the, the master is there and he does a live lecture or they set up, like, a video. So you watch a video of, like, a master and he gives you a lecture for the day for, like, an hour and, like, 15 minutes. So instead, I was like, well, I don't have that. So I just watched Masters on YouTube. Uh, and it was great because it was like whatever I needed for that day, the universe would serve it up, and it would just be like exactly what I needed for that day. You just click so on it. Was just like on did you have a created playlist beforehand? I did not have a created playlist. I did actually end up creating a playlist over time, like a watch later thing going on with just what I needed uh, or a thought I would need in the future. But like, yeah, I would just kind of like intuitively pay for them. And it was great. Sometimes things would come up and recommended, or you know, and it was just like the best because like it was like whatever I needed. It was like on an individual basis. It was just served up, and it was like perfect. So did you uh, like anything else on YouTube, or click on anything else? No, no. It was uh, it was just strictly that. So uh, I'm, I mean, yeah, that was it. The only thing I can ever really say is like I did watch. Because I was trying to, I wanted to make a, I wanted, like, on the second to last day, I wanted to make, like, a salad with, like, dressing. And I wanted to see if there was a good dressing out there. So I did watch a recipe video. But I just watched it because I wanted to make something that day. Just, uh, I think it was, it must have been, like, the second to last day or the last day. Because I wanted to kind of, like, because I've been hitting uh, the apple juice. And I was just, like, and that was interesting because the apples, uh, I think around like yeah, I, I had like a hundred pounds of it. There's three varieties: there's Gala Empire and uh, Macintosh. And the Macintosh were too soft, so I literally couldn't juice them. They became like applesauce. It was just fucking. It was so annoying, and I didn't want to nutbag it. It was just too cumbersome. It took up too much time. So I started eating the apples whole uh, about like mm, like six days in, and then I could. I don't really like apples too much, so I. I just couldn't do, I couldn't do it. It was just too, it was crazy. So I, I had to throw in dates in there to kind of, to kind of uh, get those apples down. Yeah. But the other days, I like, strictly apple juice. Um, I would, I would totally would have juiced through it. It just wasn't possible. Like it just literally, I couldn't juice it. It just like no matter how hard, like it just wasn't happening. It took up too yeah. much time. And I was like, fuck this. So yeah. So and then I, 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 activity, activity wise. The only, like, four things you did was, well, besides sleeping, the only four waking things you did was find a video to watch on YouTube, meditate, eat food, and shit and piss. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, like, the other days I legit meditated 10 hours every single day straight. No, there were no, there was no, like, hang up there at all. Like, I, I, I may have actually meditated a few days even more than that. Did you go uh, out the side? Uh, yeah, I did go outside because, like, in the retreat center, you're allowed to do that. So you can, like... But did you go, go drive like, somewhere? Did you drive your car? Um, I did have to drive at one point because I needed water. Like, I need, I go fill up these water things, and I was like... I did it at, like, 5 a.m., so didn't have to, like... Like, I don't know. So it didn't take up much time. I didn't have to talk to anyone. But... Yeah, dude, it was it was great. I mean, Where did you uh, fill up water? Where you don't have to talk to anyone? Huh? Where did you fill up the water? Where you don't have to talk to anybody? Oh, uh, it was like at this like grocery store close by. They sell. Uh, I don't think I ever took you there, but it's called Tops, and they got like they got like a self filling thing. Like you, it's like reverse osmosis water. So you close it by. Huh? Close by. It was. No, it wasn't very. <laughs> it was more like fifteen minutes away, but within five a.m. you could get there in like twelve. So it was and kind of close. It was close to like, you know, Oakland. So uh, did you have to communicate with your parents all like write code on paper or tap Morse code and shit? <laughs> um, I didn't talk to my parents at all. Nothing at all. I just sent them a message the day before, like I told you, and. Uh, it was pretty funny because they just looked at me funny when I went downstairs and I was like, yeah, day night. 
And then I was like, it was just like, yeah, it's going to happen. But you know, they actually took it better than I thought they would. So, uh, that's really yeah, good. dude. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think then the last day, um, yeah, I broke it, uh, and it was cool. It what, was did like, you, what was your first word? <laughs> first word. Uh, I actually started laughing because, uh, because my, uh, yeah, I think my mom was eating persimmon, and she never had one before, so she really enjoyed it, so I started laughing. I said, yeah, those are really good. Um, <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude. So and, 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 like that. during, during the meditation for 10 hours a day, like, can't overlook that, like, were you just constantly bringing your attention back to the breath or were you just constantly observing the thoughts or, or what were you doing mentally during that time? Yeah, see, that's the thing. Mentally, I wasn't doing anything at all, really. That was, what I realized is that, yeah, that these, like, retreats are, like, hardly, they hardly scratch the surface. It's really, like, it really hardly scratch the surface at all because it's just focusing on the breath and, like, I, it's not enough. Like, it, that's so, that's, like, it's good. It's very good. It helps build discipline. And I totally, I think it's a great practice. It's just not going to, like, if you want to get liberation, it's not going to get you there. Um, because you're not going deep enough. And they do do this at the retreat centers. It's, like, the first, I think the first three days, you only focus on your breath. But then I think on the fourth and fourth, like, and beyond, they tell you to go focus on other things, like other sensations, like pain or an itch or whatever, thoughts. Um, so what I was doing was observing the observer. And so that was kind of like, I did do just breaths for, like, the first three or four days, but then I realized it wasn't quite enough. And I was like, and this can go deeper. And uh, so, I don't know, I actually listened to this, like, guided meditation one time. And, uh, yeah, it was just, like, it helped me get into that place. I don't know how, it's hard to describe, but, yeah, it's, like, who you are. And it's, just, I can only say it's, like, it's, like, being, being life itself. It's the aliveness of life itself. I don't know. All right, dude. The masters. Yeah. They, uh, so, basically, I just rested in it for hours, and it was, I had a breakthrough, and then I kind of realized that, I absolutely don't need anything or anyone or any condition to be satisfied to be completely fulfilled. And so that was kind of a, that was probably one of the biggest revelations That's I had. That's the best. Is, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so gosh, and that was crazy. So you don't that need to buy crazy. my product? I, I don't, yeah, I don't need anything. It's so weird, but. It sounds insane, and it is too. It is because like that's not how most people live. But, like I realized that yeah, that was like I lived my whole life that way, which was I had to fulfill. Like I had to like hit these. Like I had to meet these certain conditions, and like it, and if I meet if I met that condition, then the ego would like give me a little a little fix. It would give me a little satisfaction. Yeah, and only the only if I did it in the way it wanted, and only if I did it like when it wanted, it was just such a poor way of living. And then here it was like, you don't even need to do any of that. And in fact, it's like the, the fulfillment or the satisfaction you get, it just, it just makes the other thing and the other satisfaction you get in your whole life. It just makes pale in comparison. It's just, it's absolutely nothing. It's not even fair to compare. I mean, I don't know. I literally, when I had that insight, I laughed for probably 20 minutes because I realized how stupid I was living life before that and it just made no sense and I real it was almost like it was, it's almost like you have like unlimited like unlimited persimmons like you have unlimited persimmons but then you're just like and it's all for you but you're just like I'm only going to allow myself to have this one persimmon after I go do after I go jog a mile but only one and only after I do that one persimmon but, like, the reality is, is that that whole table for Simmons, like, unlimited, it's all for you. And you can have as much of it as you want at, at any time. It's that one unlimited quantity. And it's everywhere. And you can have it all you want. But you just, and, and whatever the reason, you... the Simmons in this case is satisfaction. Is joy. Yeah, joy, satisfaction, peace. 
I was having like, all of everything gone. I was having this conversation with Sarah the other night, and we were just wondering, like, what the difference between happiness and contentment is, and is it is it a better route to go to to go after contentment or to aim to feel content rather than happiness? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. In my in my opinion, like, from what I define, like, happiness is such a it's just like an overused word and doesn't really mean much today because like it means, it's like almost like saying love like it has many definitions to many different people and like I think happiness for me is more like an excitement thing it's just like it's a, it is a temporary thing but then contentment is like is you're just satisfied with life and you don't need anything in life you don't need any condition to be met to be happy in that moment but I think even further than that because contentment because you can have contentment and like, like, let's say you, you, you completed a goal, although I would say even if you did that, you, you wouldn't feel as good as you thought you would. But if you, let's say you ate a really good meal and you're just totally satisfied, like things are good, life's good, um, you could be content in that moment, but then in the next moment, you could not be. So then I would say even further than that is just peace, which is just like, yeah, you, yeah nothing, nothing nothing really matters like it's you're cool with everything like yeah. it's okay you're you know you you're happy like you're not even happy it's just like you're you're cool with everything yeah like you're equal now like you're you have equanimity and you just whatever comes comes and whatever goes goes and you're just like you're at peace with it you're you know you let you accept it and you're you're not attached to it so um but yeah it was crazy dude so I. Like, I, I can't even, like, live life the same way anymore. It just doesn't make sense. Like, for example, like, the whole concept of, like, living a life's purpose, it just doesn't even make sense anymore. The only thing that, and even time, it just doesn't even make sense. Like, time doesn't even, it's not even here. I realize that time is such a burden. And the only, and the only reason why you think time exists is just because the mind it, it puts, it uses time as a tool to put pressure on you to keep you distracted. And the reality is, is that if you're really present, you don't, there isn't even time there. And you don't feel any pressure because there's nothing to do. There's no deadline to hit. And of course, in practical life, yeah, you, maybe you do have to do things within a certain time frame. And that's fine. But even in those cases, at every single time, it doesn't matter what the situation is, all you have to do is just do what you need to do in that moment. And you live life doing one thing at a time, doing like one thing at a time. So whatever the moment calls for, whatever whatever it demands of you, you take care of it and then you move on to the next moment and then you take care of that moment and you just live a life on a moment-to-moment basis instead of, oh, I, instead of, you know, going to bed and you, you thinking for 20 minutes about what you have to do in a week and you put a pressure on yourself, oh my God, I don't have enough time. I don't know if I'm going to make that deadline or I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. No. You take things moment to moment, which means, okay, it's time to go to bed. I'm tired. I'm going to go to sleep now because that's what the moment calls for. And then you wake up. And then then maybe the moment says, okay, we need to figure out. I need to maybe, I I think it's a good idea to come up with a plan right now for how I'm going to tackle this for the next coming week. Sure. And then you take care of that, and then you do that in that moment. But but when you're going to go to bed, that's not something you were concerned about, and you just went to sleep. Yeah. So even, th- yeah, so it's just like you just doing what you want to do in the moment and just also just doing what needs to be done in the moment, and then that's it. You do that, and life will unfold in its own way, and that's fine. It's fine. So then people's biggest question is what needs to be done in the moment? What needs to be done in the moment? Yeah, that's what people want to know. Uh, well, what needs to be done in the moment is like whatever whatever needs to be done. So what if you need, if, for example, if you don't have a lot of money right now, then, then you need to go make it <laughs> or you need to go earn it. Um, if you need to eat, then you go eat or you go fix yourself a salad or Whatever. If you need to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom. 
So you live life on a moment-to-moment thing. So whatever you need to do, or whatever you want to do. Like if you want to write a poem, you want to be creative. Yeah. You want to make a YouTube channel. If you want to, yeah, whatever you whatever you want to do in that moment. Dude, and do you, did you ever suffer from phone addiction before this medication? Before, uh, with phone addiction? Yeah, like checking your phone, man, emails and stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. hundred percent. I, I knew about it. It was definitely bad. I mean, I got pretty good with it, though. I, I didn't check it for the first, like, two or three hours of the day. But then, of course, you know, inevitably you do check it quite a bit later during the day. But, um, you, you have, yeah, you know, I, did you check it during the Vipassana at all? I did check it, yes, because, because, uh, there were certain things that were in the, in the works that needed my attention. And so I, I did allow myself to check it for Instagram messages, and I did check email for 20 minutes every day because I was in the I was literally like communicating with Steve because we're gonna move to Florida, and I was like that was gonna happen this week. So I was like, well, that needs my attention right now. So if I put this off, like things not might not seriously pull through because we need to agree on a place to live and. And then I have clients, I mean, they need, like, Adele, like, she needed, like, different file formats, and she's getting ready to share the video, like, the Thanksgiving video. And, like, you know, people needed, you know, they're just, whatever needed to be done, I took care of it. It yeah. wasn't like I need, oh, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go check things. And, and uh, you although it wasn't. time every day? No, I did not check at the same time every day, no. Just whatever, whatever I felt was, was right for it. I mean. You know, I'm not gonna lie though. There were certain I was tempted to go check, uh, to go check Instagram and just kind of like take my mind off things. And I did allow myself to do that on the last day. And I was just like, whatever, it's okay. Like, it's okay I, as long as I do it consciously. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what I do as long as it's done like, presently. And that's yeah. okay. The reason I so, ask uh, is because um. Yeah. I've I recently like I was just in my cabin for three weeks, and it was like the ultimate place physically to be to to get shit done. But I realized like I'm just so addicted to the distraction of my phone and social media and stuff that like I realized like near the end like I wasn't getting much done. And so I I hired an accountability coach. I hired a couple actually. I got a couple coaches now. And and just just through talking with them, they didn't even suggest or anything. But just with talking to them, I realized like I need to get off social media. Like I need to hire someone to do it for me. Like I don't want to be the one to check it and post it and shit. I want to create, but yeah. I need to go on and check for updates and DMs and comments and all that stuff. I just want to post. And so I've deleted Instagram off my phone. I deleted YouTube off my phone. I deleted Facebook, Snapchat, everything, every social media off my phone. Um, and and uh even that like i it was really good for the first like few days like holy shit this is amazing like everything is i'm just much more present you know i'm not checking notifications i'm just not check anymore it's all with my phone um but the other time i still check for like whatsapp messages you know and i check for like e- e- emails and things like that or i just distract myself by going on the internet and things like that you know um, yeah it's all my it's all my my hands on my phone. So then I, I just recently bought, I got it today actually, it arrived. I bought this lockbox, this time lockbox that you can put your time in and you can lock it for up to 10 days. And wow. so today, today I used it for the first time ever and I put my phone in there for two hours, like middle of the day after I got a bunch of stuff done. I was like, I'm just going to put my phone in there and, and see, see the results. And it was nuts, dude. Like, it felt <laughs> so weird not having access to my phone at all for two hours. But immediately, I noticed, like, my focus was so good on whatever it is I was doing. Because mm. There was no ability to check notifications, so I didn't think about checking notifications. Or, and not just notifications, but emails or browsing internet, whatever. Um, and so, even if you're not checking your phone... So this is what I'm realizing. This is what I'm, I'm read it, reading with the research. Even if we're not checking our phone, just us having the ability to check our phone is enough to be a distraction. Mm. 
and 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 it, it's enough for us to release like stress hormones in response to not checking it when we know we could be right. Mm. But if the phone's locked yeah. up, it's just not an option. So you just you just don't react in the same way. It's like yeah, dude. It's it's so it's such a game changer, bro. I highly recommend it. It's like fifty bucks on Amazon. It's really holy shit, dude. I have, I don't have to get that honestly because it I can I can definitely see it. Yeah, I, I noticed. I was like, yo, dude, Ted's off Instagram. I was like, no more uh, live, no more uh, stories, man. I was like, what is up with that, huh? No. Nah. And I was like, yeah. I was like, maybe he's just going dark. I don't know. Yeah, so the other thing is, too, I, I uh, deleted Facebook Messenger, and I just told everyone on Facebook Messenger to add me, all my close friends and contacts and business people, whatever, add me on WhatsApp, or I gave my phone number. So I got rid of Messenger as well. Um, right. And, dude, since, I mean, since just getting rid of social media, it's funny how, like, we're doing this at the same time, like, you were doing your Vipassana, but just, like, the biggest game changer ever, dude, like, my whole my whole adult life, ever since I got Facebook when I was freaking 16 or something, you know? Um, oh shit! It's just like mentally, I'm just so much more present and not caring about time, like you're saying. It's so interesting. Like I, I'm, not, I'm not not feeling guilty for hanging out with my friends, or not feeling guilty for 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 reading and not working instead. Like I feel like I have so much more time, and I realized that in the past, I wasn't getting stressed out with all this work I had to do. I was stressing myself out by not allowing myself. To the mind space, the head space to just be, you know, I was all mm. consuming shit. You know, just, just, just a little 30 second check on Instagram, just a little 30 check, 30 second check on Facebook messenger, you know, it, it's, you know, how harmful can it be? But the research shows, bro, that the average employee spends 40 seconds per task before they switch tasks and do something else. Hmm. 40 seconds, bro. That You mean 40 minutes or 40 oh, seconds? 40 seconds. The average employee will spend per task where they switch and lose focus and do something else. Gotcha. So if you can lock your phone up and just strictly work on the computer, do whatever you get to do on the computer or just this one tab for a good, you know, 20 minutes, that's amazing. Yeah. You can switch tasks every 20 minutes. That's like phenomenal. Mm. But usually, whether you're aware of it or not, you're probably switching tasks like every minute. You know, it's just like a little tab here and there, a new 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 browser, new window here and there. Like, like how often do you go deep? You know, it's it's so really, really when you're editing something super sick. So true. So, yeah, man, I'm. Uh, dude, I mean, that's that is a game changer. I mean, that's. Yeah, dude, social media, man, it's me, it's like, yeah, I was really hesitant to make an Instagram account, and also for security reasons, but mainly because, yeah, I just knew, it's like, it is, in some ways, I, I, in some ways, it's amazing, because it just connects you with people yeah, in ways that, yeah. I don't, it's just, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know, it's amazing in that way, and I'm extremely grateful that it exists, I mean, just like, you can use it to, like, you can use it to market, you know, like marketing is so powerful. And if I don't care how good you are at what you do, but if you suck at marketing, you're going to have a hard time, you know, doing what you want to do for a living. But and Instagram just helps you do that. And it just helps you connect with yes. other people. And it's, it's such a great tool. You know, but, you know what you could do? You can, you can, uh, I already had to do this. It's a couple times. Like with YouTube, for example, I'd upload something quick. I just quickly reinstall the app, do what I got to do, and then uninstall it. Nice. So if like nice. if I have to update my Instagram bio, which I do, I need to add a, a link tree link in there. I can just yeah. install it, update the bio, and then get off. I was thinking about that, too. I was like, yeah, I could just install it when I need it and then uninstall it. Yeah, yeah man. Otherwise, it's just sitting there wait, asking to be checked, you know? I agree. I and agree. and it's I agree. Not, what I'm realizing is it's not about the amount of time you spend on these apps. It's just the fact that you break up your attention span with them a few times every day. Mm. Mm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you, yeah. you you're probably you're probably better better off like blocking off like 20 minutes of the day, like checking Instagram. Yeah. Uh, just for like one session, then 
and even uh, yeah, and even just spending like five minutes like sporadically across yeah. the day because like you said, you just mess up your uh, yeah, you mess you're multitasking, you're messing up your focus. <laughs> That's the other thing, multitasking. Like, oh my god, man, it's I multitask way less now. Just over the course of the past week since getting rid of these things. Like, I just, like, I'm talking with you right now. I'm not doing anything else, but I'm not eating. I'm not stretching. I'm not walking. I'm sitting on the couch talking with you. That's, like, (laughs) so (laughs) different. Like, I know. I used to be all about multitasking. And ever since, I don't know what the connection is, but ever since getting rid of social media, um, I just don't really multitask anymore. It just feels so wrong. I, I guess, like, even even though I'm, I'm listening to audiobooks these days, like, I don't want to listen to an audiobook and do shit. I just want to sit and listen to the audiobook. It's, it's, really more. it's really, really interesting. Like, it just, I guess it's, it's it's that depth that I was talking about. Like, it just allows you to go deeper. Uh, and social media trains you to be shallow. Like, just skim the surface. Scroll, scroll, click, click, scroll, scroll, click, click, click. Truth, so true, man. Yeah, I noticed something too, and I was like, after the treat, I uh, it just yeah, multitasking just seems such a stupid way of doing things because it was like it's just so yeah, it splits up your focus. It's just not as fun. Like you don't enjoy it, you know. Yeah, it's a you, you like don't, if, you don't, yeah, you don't enjoy. You don't get the full experience, the full flavor. Yeah, you know, you listen to an audio book, and maybe it's like amazing, but like. Yeah, you don't get to appreciate the amazingness of it because you're diluting it by doing something else and your attention is split and you don't give it its full attention. Like, that is the best thing you can do. Like, I realize this, like, one of the greatest powers that the human being has is where it's not, it's not what it thinks about. And it's not, like, how often it thinks about, no. It's where you put your attention. Yeah. You have the power to put your attention on anything. Anything yeah. you put your attention on, you give it life. Yeah, dude. Like I every- wrote that down, like, two days ago. Oh, seriously? Oh, <laughs> shit, dude. It's, like, it's all about attention. I, <laughs> I wrote, like, a whole big notepad about that. Like, your life is all about where you put your attention. Whatever you put your attention on, it grows. Amen, dude. Yeah, dude, that's so crazy. <laughs> and so, like, with social media, like I was saying, like, you don't allow your attention to be on one thing long enough, and so you feel stressed out because it's constantly, chaotically going back and forth between 16 different apps and 20 different messages with people. Like, I don't want to have a conversation with 20 different people in a day, and and each conversation be, like, four sentences. I'd rather talk with you for an hour and talk with Sarah for an hour, and, like, that's it, and talk with Ali for an hour, you know? It gets way better. Yeah, because you get to go deeper in the conversation, and it's like you're just more, you know, you're yeah, you're, you're not pulled in many different directions. Like yeah. you can go deep on a conversation. Otherwise, yeah, you'll just have, like you said, sixteen shallow conversations. And but I mean, sometimes you know that happens, and that's fine. But but otherwise, yeah, you know, it's there's yeah, you don't get to savor, you don't get to enjoy it. It'd be like going That's to the, the gym. Event. It'd be like going to the gym and doing like one rep on seventeen different machines instead of picking like four exercises and doing like your real sets of twelve on them. You know, like Absolutely. one rep doesn't do shit. You gotta you gotta do multiple reps because it's only on like the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth rep that actually stuff changes. And so with your attention, like you saw some stuff today at, at, at your house that you don't even remember right now. Like you, cause your attention just skimmed by it so quickly, but yeah. there's also some stuff that you paid attention to today, which I'm sure you can recall right now, things that you did or saw or heard or listened to that you can remember and recall. And you know, they made an impact on you. Maybe this conversation afterwards, cause it's like you held your attention on it long enough. So true. So, so true, man. It's 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 yeah. It's, it's like social media though. It trains you to scroll, scroll, scroll. Next, 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 next. There's like the way to train the now is to get off that shit and to just 
do or be here now. It's the only way. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Yeah, like, so, like that was also a pretty big insight. Yeah, it's like where you put your attention. It's like, because like, I don't know, I was always skeptical of hearing about like law of attraction. And I do think there is some truth to that. But I almost feel like um, once you really understand like how powerful your attention is, you can you can also see that you can even take your attention off your thoughts and you can put it towards other things, such as just like listening to somebody or even just listening to yourself speak as you speak mm-hmm. or just being just very present within that. And so in that way, I think that, yeah, you give another person, for example, in a conversation, you give them the greatest gift, which is you give them your complete undivided attention. And even like you said today, like if just by you talking about your issue with an accountability partner, you kind of just realize like you have certain insights just by, you know, having somebody listen. Just even even if they don't say a word, but they give you that they they give you that space where you can just talk and you just and that person just listens. Just by them listening and giving you that space. It's it it changes the tone and you are able to hear yourself and you're able to hear your own delusion. Or you're able to hear like where where's the hang up in your life? So what is the dilemma? You answer your own question. Yes. And and people try to people try to be helpful by talking. But it's like like you I don't I don't need to say shit to help you right now. You all you need to do is just talk. And by you talking, you're getting more benefit out of what you're saying, you know, than you are from what I'm saying to you right now. Exactly, dude. That's so funny, man. Yeah, that was another thing I realized. It's like one of the greatest things you to do is to just listen. To just yeah, and listen. then what happens is you associate me with being a great conversationalist, even if I just listen and don't talk much. Because after the conversation, you're like, wow, I had so many great insights talking with Ted. And then you, you remember back to the conversation, and it was like, it was mostly you talking. You know? But you associate Absolutely. you associate me with being good good to talk to, even though you did most of the talking. I just, mm. I just held space, you know? And that's like, that's a, it's a big... Um, realization that a lot of people don't have and so they just try and talk 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 like coaches man coach's job isn't to talk a coach's job is to ask the right question and then sit back and shut up so true <laughs> like I'll, i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna write a list of questions for my coach and i'm gonna give her the list and i'm gonna say hey next session ask me all these questions and i'll tell you when i'm done answering <laughs> <laughs> I'll coach you how to coach. <laughs> at least this session. Oh, uh, at least this session. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I mean it's, yeah, dude. it's it's like it's like telling the masseuse what you want. They're like, all right, uh today I'm not just gonna lay here and you do my full body. Today we're gonna work my hamstrings for forty five minutes and then my upper neck for fifteen minutes and go. Like those are my problem spots. Let's work on them. So true. So powerful. Yeah, dude. I mean, where you just giving, yeah, just giving space. It's just, ah, just like it's, it's just the way, it's just the way the reality works. It's like where everything wants your attention. So like, yeah, just giving your person and your undivided attention and just listening. It's so much more of a gift to that person than you trying to, you know, fix them or just yeah. give them like unsolicited advice. Even sometimes it's mm-hmm. just just listening and just that, and that that's all you ever need to really give somebody. If sure, it's fine. If, if they really ask you for it, okay, fine. Maybe you can give them something, but like you can tell them some piece of advice. But yeah, yeah at the end of the day, it's just listening and. Yeah, like you said, not many people, many people would just prefer to talk. And, 
Yeah, I just think, yeah, the, the wiser you become, the, the less you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, what, what's, that, what's that quote you have in your bedroom? Yeah, dude, that's so true. Yeah, knowledge what? speaks, the wisdom listens. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's it, dude. That's it. <laughs> Um, I I installed this app like none of my friends know this yet you're the first one to know it's kind of creepy but um, I'm going to start telling them all now but I installed this app and uh, it records the calls every call I have but at the end of the conversation uh, I just I've been just deleting them because I haven't had any like breakthrough conversations yet. But this is a breakthrough conversation. I'd love to export it and send it to you, and you can have a copy of it. And then uh, oh, dude, for sure. If you want to listen back, what... then um, go for it. And uh, if you like it, then I can upload it to uh, as a podcast. Oh, dude, that's so cool! <laughs> oh my god, dude, I'd be so down for that, man. Go for it, man. Oh that's my god, yeah. Kind of the reaction I was hoping for, bro. Dude, that's so cool, man. I wanted to do something like this so bad. You have no idea. Like, we, we, I, I, cause like, I feel like when we, like, there's just like certain people in my life when I have conversations with them, we just get so deep and I feel like it could just like, like if people, like, I feel like it would just like help people like so much or just like, it's just great for people to listen to just things like, cause you know, like. People can hear anything. Like, they can listen to TV, they can listen to music, and, okay, fine, it entertains them in some way. But I feel like in this, like, you, there's always the possibility, like, they, you unroot something with them, or, like, you unroot this, like, negative, like, thought pattern. You know, they're, they're stuck in their echo chamber, but they just hear this one thing, and it's like, boom, it just breaks it from. But it's like, it's not really possible, just, like, you talking through camera. It's right. like... It's like, it's like, it's like, you know, that's why you get a coach. If you could coach yourself, you would do it and you probably can. But it's always helpful to have someone else ask Ooh. you the questions, right? Because then that gets, that prompts you yeah. to start, you know, to think about it. And, you know, you can do it too. You can journal and that's great. And you can totally do self coaching and mm-hmm. I do it. But, but yeah, like, you know, it. like you said, you know, you wanted to hire somebody as an accountability you know, to, to help you, you know, you didn't want to have to put it all on yourself. Oh, dude, and I, I get her to record the calls, and she sends them to me, and the, the calls are very much like this, like, we just talk, and we have, like, breakthroughs, and then I listen to the call again the next day, and I'm like, whoa, I gotta take notes now, like, that's good shit right there. And so, <laughs> I'm getting double, I'm double dipping on the sessions, you know, I'm getting twice the benefit, I'm re-listening to it all. Yeah, dude, that's so cool, man. Heck yeah, dude. That's so, awesome. The thing is, yeah. now that you know this call is recorded, um, I mean, they're probably going to be recorded in the future as well, but like, if it's just a whatever quick call, I always delete them right away because I don't want to waste space. But um, yeah, now that you know the calls are recorded, um, we can uh, we can have more calls in the future and just and just talk about whatever, dude, Like just it, without the intention of recording it, right? We, yeah. just, we just called to say, yo, what's up? But honestly, the reason I called you was not to record a freaking podcast. I called you to tell you I wanted to email you the, the pictures you asked for. Um, because you said you don't have the pictures, right? Yeah. So I need to, I mean, I have them on my hard drive. Uh, I'll, I'll plug it in right after this call and, and upload them to drive for you. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad. Like, like the, you said you've wanted to do something like this for so long, right? And yes. me freaking too, bro. So I did something about it. I went and downloaded an app. I just tried a bunch and see, see which app worked. And because I've had so many dope phone calls and afterwards, I'm like, oh, I wish this thing was recorded, man. Um, I know, dude. Same. So same, 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 same. From now, from now on, dude, uh, hopefully this, this works well. Yeah, dude. So you're going to post this to YouTube? I'll post it to YouTube, yeah, and I'll post it to a podcast uploader like iTunes or something. That's so cool, man. So cool. Yeah, yeah this, this, Dude, can be, uh, this can be the first episode, bro. <laughs> that's so cool, man. I'm pumped. I'm glad you didn't tell me that. That's so cool. You yeah. just made it more... Uh, yeah, like you said, there was like no intention. Like At least there wasn't any for me. So it was like, I yeah, just, everything's off the cuff. That's so you, cool. You, you're, it will still be. You aren't trying to like prove anything to anyone. You're just talking to me. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool, dude. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't tell me until now. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, you can even not. Uh, you can even just yeah, just, you don't even have to tell me, man. Just like in future ones, like if you want to upload it, just fucking. Well, no, you know, on our the, side. Thing is, the thing is, like, I don't know if we said anything, like, not yeah, emailing, true, but true. I don't know if like we talked about, you know, um, someone in a certain way, or we, or we gave our you know, certain private confidential info about like your mom's address or, you know, your phone number or something like that, you know, like I need to make sure gotcha. uh, it's safe to go online. But this conversation I feel was, was pretty safe. Um, oh, for sure. hundred percent. So, yeah, man. Anyways, uh, like I said, I called to tell you, I'm going to send you those photos over. And uh, is that all you need from me? You just need the, the whole folder with all the photos. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just in the whole folder, photo folder. Yeah. That's it. And, uh, okay, I don't know what photos are on there, but I'll just, I'm, I'll just send them to you. Um, cool. It's in the RWR folder, by the way. R- so R- like RWR. What's that stand for? Rocktober Wellness Retreat. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah, dude, I looked at the footage. Um, super, super dope. I need to do something with that. But now that, yeah, I'm, dude. now that I'm back home, I'm in the city. I got kick-ass Wi-Fi. Uh, good internet connection. I and I got the lockbox on my phone. I can just put my phone in there and get to work, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's gonna be. I see so you can. You're gonna try to make something out of it, or are you gonna? Yeah, the work thing on is, I need to determine when my next retreat's gonna be, and I want to cut it for that. Edit it for that, but I. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the other thing too, I wanted to just briefly touch on here. Um. Have you heard of a dopamine fast? A dopamine fast? Yeah. Um, man, dude, that's interesting. I don't know. I I mean, I suppose you could. You could. You would have to water fast, though. You couldn't yeah, eat either. Exactly. So, so what you do is you're pretty much only allowed to do three activities that day. Uh, you drink water. Uh, sorry, that counts. So four, activities, four activities. Drink water. Walk. Meditate and write. Pen to paper. Sounds good. <laughs> All day. There's no texting. There's no YouTube. There's no audiobooks. There's no music. There's no massage. There's no sex. There's no masturbation. No drugs. No stimulants. It's just water, walk, meditate, and write. You do that all day. And um, apparently that's supposed to make you super productive the following day. Because your body's like so hungry for just like any sort of pleasure, it'll work for pleasure, right? That's so interesting. Get shit wow. done for pleasure, but during the doping fast, you're not allowed to get shit done. You have to restrain yourself or refrain yourself, and you just yeah. and you write and write and get everything out of your head, getting cluttering you up. And I'm sure you have some really good insights doing that too, man. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Like, I have like. I'm not, obviously, I wouldn't share all of it, but I do want to share some of that, but they're kind of long. Like, I do, like, they're not long, but, like, I like to expand on them because I feel like that's, like, you can get something from that if you just, you know, if you have the time. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, Instagram's not, it doesn't seem to be a great, doesn't, I mean, it's a fucking imaging sharing site, right? Yeah. So, uh, or just, like, apps. I mean, it's a social media share of images, whatever. Uh, and, like, text is, like, less so. So I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think like the only way to really go is to, like make a blog or some shit like that. Well, I don't here's, know. Here's, I might just... here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. We can have a call, a phone call, and you can share with me all these different insights, and I can ask you questions like to clarify or add something to the insight, whatever. And then that call can be recorded, and then we can take that transcript. It'd be a long ass call, a two three hour call, whatever. Then that call can be transcribed, sent to a trans- transcriptor, transcriber. They type it all out. Then once you have it all typed out in front of you, you can just go ahead and start copying, pasting shit, and editing it, and adding what you want, deleting what you want, and then there's your content. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I I have it already checked. Like, that sounds great, and I just probably do that in the future. Um, you already have I already it. have it written. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, it's even better because now, because now what you do, so the, the 
point of what I just said was to get to the stage where you're at now, which is to have it written okay. nice and clear. So you're already at that stage. You skipped the, the brainstorm stage. You just wrote. You just wrote. So that's cool. Um, now what you can do is you can read it and narrate it and record that and upload that as a little audio clip. Okay. And so it could be like either like a mini podcast or just a, a blank YouTube video with like pictures on the screen or whatever. Like it's just audio, like a little short little audio book or a short little audio clip in, inside of the day or whatever. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so I, I, like I, I like, as much as I like to read, um, I'd rather listen. And yeah. I, since quitting social media, I've read a lot more. Like I read so much more now. I used to never read. Now I actually read like a good hour a day, which is so new to me. Um, nice. But listening is it's it's so easy. I mean, you can like I said, I don't like to really multitask anymore. But you can listen while you walk. You can listen while you drive. You can listen while you eat. You can't really do it when, when you're reading. Um, and if you have it in audio form, then that means you now have it in two forms. You have it in the written form and you have it in the audio form. So you can send people to the blog. And in the bottom or the very top, you can say, click here to listen to this. That's so. So it just sends them, to a sound, cool. sends them to a SoundCloud link, and they listen to it on SoundCloud. Nice. Yeah, dude, I like this. Man. And then, good, and then yeah. there, there, that's your content, bro. That's how you just create content. You have an insight, you write it out, and you record it, and people download it, listen to it every day, and they're like, thank you very much, Patrick. Yes, I like it, dude. I'm gonna have to get on there because, uh, yeah, I just I, there's just so much in like Instagram. It's like the captions are they're, like limited to like two thousand two hundred characters. I'm sure that. Nobody, like, nobody God damn it! Dude, they're scrolling quick. They want to get in and out. I know exactly, and that's what I'm thinking too. I'm like, dude, I don't even read anybody else's stuff hardly ever, and I'm just like, I, yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's like you said, it's shallow. You know, it's like you scroll, you click like, and then you scroll and whatever. And, and, and not, even, if, even if, bro, even if Instagram did allow you to, you know, have more characters, you still wouldn't post there because you know it's not the right medium. Yeah. It's, and yeah, and, and exactly. the same goes for email. People, and I made this mistake last year big time. And it, I see people doing it all the time still to this day, and it boggles my mind. I'm never going to do it again. They write big-ass email newsletters. And it's like, yo, I go to <laughs> email so I can check shit and delete stuff and get out. I'm not on my email. Yeah. As, as cool as what you wrote is, um, I'm not here to read. You could have done me a yeah. massive favor by putting a link saying click here to read today's email or click here today, read today's insight and take me to a separate website dedicated to that text, you know, and I'd be, or, 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 better, yet, or better yet, download the PDF. Get the PDF, it has the same content that could have been in the email, but now it's in the PDF and I actually want to read it now because it feels more special. It's in a PDF. It's separated itself from the email. It's now much more important. You know? Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I, mean, I have noticed that too. I'm just like, I'm like, it's just, it, it's just, yeah, like you said, you know, it sounds, it's, it might be like awesome content. It's just not the right media, you know? Like, it's just, you, like you said, you, you want to get in and get out. And I do the same thing. Like, I don't want to read this huge thing. It's just like, it's like, it, that's like a time commitment that I didn't, I wasn't prepared to make. If I go to your blog, then I probably am prepared. And like, I know, Yes, like what, exactly. You're what? going there. You're going to the blog for the purpose of reading that, right? It's like, it's mm. like walking into the library to study. You walked in there to study, right? But you could also study in your room, bro. But it's much easier to study in the library. Yeah. It's just the library is the medium for studying. You could study in the freaking subway, but you're not going to, even though you could, because it's not the right medium. Yeah. So there's a, there's a medium for for everything, and um, yeah. when it comes to reading shit, Instagram is not the way to go. Email is not even the way to go unless it's like a short nine word email. Uh, it's it's just not the way. So yeah, man, hundred percent, man. Yeah, dude, true, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get those out because uh, yeah, dude, that just fucking crazy shit. Like I, you know, there's just and there's a lot. You know, they're they're very simple, but at the same time, like they need things to expand on it. And uh, but yeah, I don't know. So I and you know, I yeah, like you said, just get get a good medium to 
So I think that's the way to go. Yeah, and, and, and another thing, too, that would be really cool, like I'm sure those are really good conversation starters, those insights. And so mm. you could, you could um, call people up and you could talk about that insight and ask them what they think. And then they could give you their whole perspective on it and then you could have a whole conversation based on that one insight. And yeah, that's so true. And it would, so cool. it would be a deep conversation because the insight itself is quite deep. So it's the yeah. foundation is, uh, is, is, is in there, man. It's deep from the get. Yeah, exactly. Just fucking shatters that ice, man. Just goes straight into the deep end, man. I like it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> well, yo, man, I got to pee, and I don't want the pee trickling into the audio. <laughs> so. Yeah, no problem, bro. Um, <laughs> thanks for calling, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. I'll send you this audio recording uh, right after this, and you can uh, give it a listen tomorrow. Okay, sounds good, bro. All right, so <laughs> thanks, man. See you soon, and uh, so I want to hear more about you and Steve moving to Florida, man. That sounds amazing. For sure, bro. Absolutely. Uh, we'll definitely talk to you again, man. For sure. Much love, dude. Thanks for calling. Yep, sure. Bye. Well, that was that. Thank you so much for listening to the first ever episode of the Friends and Positivity podcast. This podcast has been a dream of mine for a while. I've been wanting to put a podcast together. I just was never sure how. So I'm glad that this first episode is over and done with. Now it's just time to upload it and get it out to, to you and your friends and your family members and anyone else who's, who's interested in learning about my friends and learning about the positive lifestyle. I hope to bring on more people on this show very, very soon here. And I hope to continue, the, we'll keep the ball rolling with positivity because I think it's something that a lot of people don't really have a good example for. They don't really have many positive role models in their life. And Patrick and I are real people. Like I'm walking around my friend's apartment building right now and I'm recording this audio with, with my phone and my left hand and my right hand is doing the, the body language that, you know, the, the gestures that, that, that come when you're, you know, speaking. And I'm just a real person. Patrick's just a real person. Patrick did what he said he did. You know, he sat in his house for 10 days and he meditated every day. And he's just, he's a really, really cool dude. And there are people out there who focus on love, who focus on positivity, who focus on trying to live the, the best life ever and we're, we're, we're searching for different ways and you know the, the truth is like the center of town you know there's so many paths that can get you there and uh, this podcast hopes to just shine some light on the various avenues that you can take the various paths that, that you can take to get to the truth to get to the essence of why you're really here on planet earth and so as Patrick mentioned in the podcast, he's kind of done looking for life purpose. He's kind of over that. He kind of realizes that it's all here and now. And that, as he was saying with the persimmons, like you have an entire table full, full of persimmons at your disposal. You can eat as much as you want. And he was referring to satisfaction. Like you can have unlimited satisfaction at any time, irregardless of the circumstance just about creating the right mindset and having the right perspective on life and so this podcast and the episodes that follow I want to shine more light on those perspectives that my friends and I share on positivity and on on life and uh, I think I think the future is very very bright and I'm very very excited to share more guests with you in the future so if you like this episode be sure to subscribe for more and head on over to canadafruitfest.ca where you can find out how you can hang out with more people like myself and Patrick and all the other guests on the show because the Canada Fruit Fest is going to be featuring a lot of these people in real life. So you can come hang out with us, brainstorm with us, just kick it, just play, just connect and uh, see where that leads. So again, thank you very much for listening to this first episode. I do hope that you come back for the second episode. I'm not sure who we're going to interview yet, but if you'd like to be a guest on the show, then feel free to contact me. You can head over to canadafruitfest.ca and uh, contact me through there and just let me know that you, if you want to, be a, want to be a guest. All right. Peace out for now. Much love. Adios.